so you may have heard me sort of joking around in class about how one of your biggest goals is to make friends with engineers. Uh, and I've also said that, you know, architects simulating performance by themselves can be a scary proposition. Uh, something, uh, an error came up that I wanted to use as an example of this and what we should do about it. So here's a nice little, you know, um, house that, um, designed for exercise two that, um, is ready to be uh, thermally simulated. And so, um, let's run a simulation. So we have, you know, all, all of these, um, Individual rooms, including these closets, have been set up as zones. It's a little bit weird, but um, should work, right? Let's just try it. And I clicked it. The simulation window opened up briefly and closed, so it doesn't work. And so why, why, what are we going to do? Ah, um, the first thing we should always do is look at what the program is telling us. And this used to irritate me about Rhino. That it was it just seemed kind of like an old school program. Um, you know, you have to type in the commands a lot of times and there's all this information here, but it's actually really helpful. So let's look at what um, it's saying here. Okay, we, we opened up the, the, the program, Climate Studio's going. We um, started uh, a thermal simulation, CS Energy, and we got an error here. So, and it's a severe error. Um, we can look in, it's telling us that there's a place we can go find a full report. But it's basically saying the, the severe error was that we're um, in the bathroom. In this case, the uh, minimum cooling supply air is 55 degrees. And it, it, this is the, the program is looking for less than 50. Um, why? Uh, it's probably an energy plus setting, like a, a range. It It's... This is what I'm talking about. I don't know. It's some engineering thing that I don't I don't have access to. I'm sure I can understand it if someone explained it to me, but I don't know what it is. So, but I can use my common sense to go. Well, let me just let me just try to fix it. And so I'm going to come. I bet it's not just the bathroom. Well, let's try it. Let's go to the bathroom. Is that what it says right here? Right, bathroom. So let's try the bathroom. And oh my God, it's so helpful to have these named zones, right? So this is you can start seeing why we're doing that. Um, I'm going to edit that go to my conditioning and change here's the 55 the minimum cooling air supply um, i'm going to make that 48 because it said 50 was what it was looking for something less than 50 and i'm going to try running it hmm now it's saying the bedroom exact same um message so maybe it need, we need all of the zones to be set to that so i'm going to do that i'm going to make this 48 So in other words, we fixed the, the, the bathroom and now it's saying bedroom. So I'm thinking, okay, it's just going to do that for all of them. So I'm going to try to go to, um, let me make sure. Sometimes these, this doesn't, if I don't, yeah, okay, I did change it. Now I'm going to try running it. And look, it's working. Uh, the simulation is running. So let's see if we get outputs. Okay, we do, but whoa, <laughs> I'm going to change the IP here. Shoot, 878 to four, in our baseline. And again, this is not really, um, individual houses are not really what um, these simulations are set up for. 90.1 and other um, simulation um, paradigms are not designed for single family homes. Anyway. That's not why this is happening. This is crazy too much. And if we look at it, um, it's all, so we're all heating load and um, hot water. It's bizarre. And if I go look at the energy flow, so it's just something's wrong here. It's all cooling, all, you know, this gray stuff is all um, cooling. Um, okay, so that didn't work. And so, so should we give up? Should we try something else? Um, this is where we, we should talk and I've mentioned it before, you know, I, I, I didn't see really a harm in just saying whatever, make whatever zones you want because, you know, like closets, closets aren't probably going to be thermal zones. It's possible that we did, we would do some kind of, um, uh, closet dryer, which, you know, uses, um, the ventilation system to, to, as, as a dryer. That's a cool thing, but we're not doing that right now. And here's a closet in here. It's a lot going on here. These are pretty small. 
right? So um, less than six feet by eight feet. I don't know. That might be too small. Um, it's not telling us that, but I'm a little bit, you know, concerned about that sizing. I've definitely seen, you know, if you make something that's too large, like more than I think 10,000 square feet, you can't create a zone that large. Definitely things that are that are really small, like if you did it in, the, in millimeters, um, you know, if it was one inch by two inches, it's not going to be enough um, to run a simulation. So it could be something like that. Um, and we don't really need all these zones. I mean, what are we? The, 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 a thermal zone is basically we're basically saying what. Um, Let's def define a volume of air that's separate from the outside and from something that's next to it. And then def define thermal variables that are related to that zone. So the number of people that are going to be in it, the kind of HVAC it's running, um, the, the set points. You know, a small house like this, it might have one zone. So what I'm going to try instead then, I'm going to actually delete all these zones. And now we're back to they're deleted believe me um, and I'm going to I, I've already drawn a another zone here of the whole building so this is actually where, where we'd want to start we might want to add a zone for you know the um, let me turn off everything and then talk about this a little bit you know it might make sense that we had a separate zone for the bathroom or maybe all of our bedrooms together make up one zone because that's we're going to have a, a, a different HVAC setup for that um, but for right now and what we're doing I think we can just call this a single zone um, so let me make this a zone I don't care what template I'm using right now It worked. Let me add all of the windows. Come back here. I'm sorry, I didn't select it. So, oh, I think you just remembered them from before. If I go in these zones, it's, they're going to be, yeah, they're already in here. Okay. So this is ready to go. By the way, that's something that Climate Studio does, at least in, in the thermal uh, analysis workflow, is if, you, if I had zones before, I delete them, I do other things, I add them back, it often says, oh, I bet you, had, you know, I remember those windows, so I'm just going to put them back in. Um, so I already had these in the other um, iteration, so, I'm gonna, so they're here already. That's why I couldn't add them again. Let's run the simulation working and ah, now we have a much more sensible um, right we're actually below the baseline we've got windows showing up here in our energy flows there's an envelope there's an air infiltration yay that's relaxing and now we go and talk to our engineering friends and, and ask them what happened with that, <laughs> with that other iteration but in this class all we're trying to do this is a really good example of where we then we looked at what Climate Studios or, or what the, the program is telling us. We used our common sense and our intelligence to make some decisions, try some things. Uh, and we came up with something that I'm pretty confident is, is a functional model. And we learned something along the way. So that's great.